So what we have here, this is called the heart sound recorder, and it's basically like a stethoscope with a computer readout. Um, it's got a microphone, but instead of putting it in the ears, we put it into the computer, because the computer can hear a lot better than what humans can hear. It can pick up a lot more noises. So first, I'll gather your information, and then after we get your information, we'll, we'll run the test, and then after we run the test, we'll get the results for you. Okay. We're going to go ahead and run the test. So this is the microphone. Okay. The microphone will get placed in four places. It'll go here, 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 and here. Okay. Okay, that was your mitral. Halfway done. Your shoulders. All right, we're all done. Pretty quick, pretty non invasive there. Our Cataplex B is a lot different than the other B vitamins out there. You have a lot of companies, they take synthetic coal tar, just synthetic chemicals, and they combine them together and they call them vitamins. And it doesn't really do anything for the body. Um, the Cataplex B, ours is different because it's made from whole food nutrition. We take stuff like livers, yeast, carrot root, and we, we, germ, we put all that in a corkscrew press and they squeeze. And then the juice comes out. And we take that juice and we dry it out. We make our tablets out of that. And then all that other stuff, we actually put back out on the farm and continue to grow more organic you know, vegetables. So that's a little bit, that's how we make our vitamins. So it's a lot different than the synthetic chemicals out there that you see. So I would try to recommend eating liver if that's something that you can do. If not, I'm going to have to recommend <laughs> you try to take some of the B vitamins. Another thing is over here, uh, carnitrophin PMG. Our cardiotrophin PMG is actually, it's like the building blocks of the heart, okay? If you remember how I told you how we make our mm -hmm. vitamins, we, we press it. Well, we do the same. We take like bovine hearts and we squeeze. And then when that juice comes out, we're looking to get the nucleic material from it. So we actually use certain salt systems to separate the nucleic material from the cytoplasm. And then what you're left with is all the building blocks, the DNA building blocks of the, the heart itself. So think of it like... Your heart's a job site that's always under repair, always under construction, it's always working. And you just dropped off a whole bunch of construction materials there. That way it can repair and rebuild and do all the stuff. So think of it that way. That's what our cardiotrophin's like. Okay. So when it comes to organ meat, think of it this way. In the old days, whenever, in the tribal days, when humans were tribes, uh, whoever made the kill got to eat the heart and the liver. Or they might share it with the tribe leader or the pregnant women or the, the warriors of a tribe to protect them. And because that's where the strength, that's where the strength and density was, is in the organ meat itself. And all the other people got to eat the leftovers, which was just the tissue meat. So when we as a society, we are eating tissue meat now, and we should be eating organ meat. If you, if you kill an animal and you leave it in the wild, or like an animal gets hit and killed in the wild, all those scavengers come and they go for that organ meat first. It's the most nutrient dense part that they can get. And then all the tissue meat is just leftovers. So keep that in mind. It's what's organ meat is where it's where we get the best bang for our buck when it comes to nutritional.